Hi, I'm Kimberly Jensen, and thank you for joining me today because I have a very special guest that I'm thrilled to bring to you. Her name is Maxine Bonds. She's an amazing talent, amazing actress, amazing friend, and wonderful. Just, it's wonderful having her in my life and having her work with me. Here she is, Max. Come on in. Hello. Hi. <laughs> So you've been working for a very long time, Max. Um, and I would love to just talk to you even about like, what was your first gig that really changed your life or um, helped you as an actress or even told, taught you a lot? Well, I mean, first jobs, I did a couple of shorts when I was at NYU. So those are my first, but the first job, the first feature I did was the Brothers McMullen. And that, you know, kind of changed my life. Not kind of, it did. But uh, it was hard because I didn't really know what I was doing. None of us did, to be quite honest. And um, it was um, shot on weekends over a course of like a year, eight months to a year. And I was in school full time. And so, you know, half the time when we shot on the weekends, I was thinking about, you know, going through like my studying for an exam or an oral presentation or just studying. Um, during the downtime of which there wasn't that much because it was like guerrilla filmmaking. But, you know, we were just running to like different locations with no permits or anything. Um, but it changed my life because it really introduced me to acting. That's incredible that you shot it that way. And what were you studying at NYU? I uh, have a bachelor's degree in Latin and Greek. Yeah. Oh my so gosh. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I and it was very hard this. yeah classics yeah it was wow. a super hard, uh yeah major and but so I, I, you got thrown into it so how did you get the gig well i got the gig because number one i was uh dating the the director at the time it was like we had been dating for like seven years anyway he was uh, casting this movie and he needed a reader. So hello, I was the reader. Um, and no one was getting paid anything. There was, there it was not even deferred. It was nothing. Um, so it's hard to find people, right. To do stuff for free. So I read with everyone, if, you know, and, um, and I would go through all the headshots and everything. And then I read for my, I read with somebody else for my part. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the week or whatever, he was like, will you, please play this role like you're doing it better than whatever. And um, so I said, sure. And then we started and it was every weekend or every other weekend for like eight months. And I mean, you can see in the movie, my hair changes. I think one time I like hennaed it. It was totally black. <laughs> I, was a, you know, a college student. <laughs> I know it was really fantastic. There's no like, you know, person telling me that I can't, you know, normally when I do it, a gig and they're like don't touch anything but i didn't know i wasn't like i was being um disrespectful or whatever i was just i didn't realize so you were in yeah. college i was in college this, yeah full-time yeah, student and, and, and this is like a runaway hit it becomes a huge success i know i know it's funny too because the canister of the film sat in like the shoe closet for a long time before anything ever happened. So it's not like we shot really? it and it was like, oh, here we go, we're going to Sundance. No, it was sat in the closet for, yeah, a while, the canister, you know, the big tin or whatever. Right. Yeah, back in the days. <laughs> so they yeah. shot it on 35. I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's a canister, I, I shot yeah. on 35. Okay. Wow, yeah. that is so, so cool. So what did you learn besides uh, obviously you never know what's going to happen to something you do, you know, that's so randomly, you know, gifted to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as I, I mean, I learned on that about lighting and I learned how complicated it was to make a film and how hard it was to make a film. I mean, everything that goes into it, right. Organizing everyone, location scouting, permits simple things like eating you know which i don't think we ate you know um just 
yeah, it was fun. I, I, um, I had a really good time. I kind of just, as far as acting, I mean, I definitely, at the end of the day, I was like, when I finally saw it, I was like, Oh, I need to, I need to get in some, some classes. I need to find some really good coaches and get into some classes, you know, and I'm really grateful that it, I'm so lucky, right? It's like, it's like winning the lottery to have that happen. And it, it, it really is. And it's so, but it was so meant to be because you're such a lovely actress. Tell me, oh, you know, one of your favorite roles that you've played where you feel like you connected to the character. Well, I have to say that I feel like the, the, I, I love uh, dark, um, emotionally challenged characters, right? I love that. Um, and I don't really think I've played that yet. So, um, I, I don't know. I feel like that's, that's down the road still. I've just had like a lot of fun and all, everything I've done, to be quite honest. Um, the most fun I've had, I have to say, was probably, uh, two films. One was called, uh, Conjurer with Andrew Bowen and John Schneider. And we, I played a woman who in the very beginning of the film loses her baby and I'm like seven months pregnant, right? And then we I, we go oh, and wow. come. Yeah, and it's like that scene was pretty gnarly, right? So I'm told that my baby's dead in my stomach and I'm full oh. like, yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of, uh, that was definitely one of your, well, I had to pull out your tool for that, right? I mean, we weren't working together then, but I was like, I wish I would have had like your, the whole emotional content piece, mm -hmm. you know? When I When I did that, that scene um but that was a fun it was a scary movie it was just a fun movie we shot in georgia um for like a month or so and then uh, another movie i did was um cutaway which my character ran a drop zone and uh a drop zone is you know where you uh skydive and i jumped out of a plane because i wanted to be able to i'm like if i'm running if i'm running a drop zone Right. I have to be able to, and I jump, jump out of planes. My character jumped out of planes like every day, all the time. Uh, I jumped out of a plane myself and uh, that was pretty scary, but it was interesting because I'm terrified of heights. You actually jumped out of plane as part of your research for the character? I did. Yeah. Stephen Baldwin wow. did too. Tom Berenger, I think did. Yeah. We all just did it. It was frightening. When you, you're in a little plane, you look out and it's just squares, you know, it's freaky. And to be honest, it didn't do anything for my heights. If anything, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't that's recommend. funny. Yeah. So as far as acting goes, when do you feel like you started to really come into the work? Um, let's see. I don't know. I mean, I think that after Brothers, I started working and really getting in touch with, um, it was like finding that balance between ima my imagination, which I have a crazy imagination, right? I'm a Pisces and I have a balancing Im imagination and emotions and making it authentic. What was your favorite tool that you've used so far in my class? <sighs> favorite tool. I mean, obviously active listening is key, right? I love just, and then if you're the listening is so crucial, but the emotional content, honestly, the imagination and the emotions, keeping it real. And when you, um, I remember your essence course, I think it was in essence, the essence class. Yes, we did the essence the, course. Yeah. yeah. The essence course. Yeah. I was thinking that might be, uh, you know, before I came into the interview today, I was thinking, I bet it's the essence work because there's not a lot of people that have done a lot of essence work with me. I don't know how many people I've done it with, but I've been doing them since, believe it or not, 30 years in that course, it was, um, it really, uh, I mean, emotional content was everything and being able to, um, really harness my emotions and not control them and let them go and feel them throughout my whole body and not just in my head. That was really what something that I learned in the essence course, which is just amazing. Now I feel so, I'm so emotionally available. And I think that's from working with you. I'm really, um, and also being able to control it so that it just doesn't go, because you still have to do the scene, right? So if you're extremely in pain and suffering and you're 
and you're feeling this character, you still have to be able to do your dialogue and tr uh, focus on your other and your scene partner. So I, I feel like you've taught me how to do all of that, which is everything. Well, I really appreciate you acknowledging that. I just, I really loved, I love working with you. Um, I remember we we even did some little fun little shoots at one point in the class just to mock, do mock shoot, you know, mock shooting. Yeah. And how well you take direction on camera, and how you you deliver right then and there in a in such a natural and inspired way. I think you inspired everybody in the room. You brought everybody's game up. So, Thank you. You know, well, yeah. That room, I mean, really that room was amazing. I'm telling you, that was amazing. Some of those those, those nights when we were working. I mean, everyone that I just felt like that. Anti was so upped, right? And I don't want to say it was competitive, but after I would see a scene, I was like, ooh, I need to bring it. And that was a really good feeling, right? And I would walk out of class at like 11, 1130 at night, just kind of high, but at the same time, emotionally depleted because of all the scenes <laughs> that were just so good, right? It was amazing. Yeah. That's so, so wonderful. That one, I actually wrote it down, the quote in your book, you're a magnet for that which you need to grow through. That's it right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of psychology, I know you love psychology. How do you, how do you like bring that into your acting? You know, some of your experiences. Well, I've always been uh, fascinated by what makes people tick? Like, why do they do what they do? Like from serial killers to love addicts. It's helped me in my acting because I kind of try to channel that. And now that I've studied, I have a master's degree in uh, psychology also. And I just, um, I've learned so much about just what makes people tick and why they do it. And, um, but lear learning about human behavior is, is very helpful. Isn't it such an interesting journey we're on, Max, on this planet? I love it. You know, I love this exploration. I just wrote a screenplay about a trans recovering alcoholic and a heroin addict. And um, I'm really excited about the film. How did you do all the research? I knew all of these characters. I, everyone that I'm writing about, actually, I knew about, which was sad. I had a ballerina friend who was a heroin addict. And I also had a friend who was a heroin addict that was my partner, um, not my um, romantic partner, but a music partner. He, um, and, and I knew a trans. And so I knew these people. And then I did research after that, uh, obviously. And so then I wanted to make it more relevant for now. Mm -hmm. So it did bring up a lot of thoughts about how, you know, nature versus nurture and what we're told as children and what, comes into our mind when we're um, growing up very young. Mm -hmm. And in mm -hmm. my book, in the first chapter, Playing the Love, a lot of it is, a lot of Playing the Love is about finding the character's wound. Even if they're, we never see them vulnerable. We still have to understand, as an actor, you have to understand where your character's coming from, where they live inside themselves, even when they're alone. That every character's in their own orbit, and then they come into another person's orbit and then they connect or they, you know, we can evolve around people's orbits. But mm -hmm. the reality is, is that we're in our own world and there's right. just the surface that shows up that we see. And right. then there's, yeah. You always, you always said, open your heart, your senses and listen, right? Yes. I'm glad you remember all this, Max. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a Rita, a Rita holic. <laughs> so it's good. Yeah. I think I read your so, book like times. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, each time, okay. So each time you read it, what do you what do, do you get something different? Yeah, I mean, because you're at a different stage. I'm at a different stage in my life, right? So I just um, I really hooked into the emotional content stuff, the images, and coming working from your subconscious. That's all interesting to me. Um, I mean, it's like you can never be done studying and anything really, but especially acting. 
and psychology. You can never be done studying. It's ever, ever changing, ever shifting. Talk to me about how you've incorporated all of this into TV. Yeah, I, I love TV. I mean, like, I never forget when I went into TV, I was I did my first like guest star or whatever. I was like, wow, I love this. It's fast, <laughs> fast and furious. It was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the same acting is acting, you know, whether I'm on TV or movies. I just, uh, I just, I really like it though. I like the pace. What's the biggest lesson you learned working on, on a set? The mood of the set is really um, set by the, the main series, the cast, the main cast. And I've been on some sets where it's just fantastic and just lovely. And then I've been on some where it's like really tense and you can just feel it all through the crew. It's kind of yicky, right? So I definitely just learned that the when if you're a, a, a main person of series regular, you know, you set you're setting that tone. So you should uh, really acknowledge that. That's really an interesting um, factor of shooting because generally when you're on a film set, the the director sets the tone. Right. Right. Yeah, I know. But you know, some of these cast members have been around for a long time and they're exactly. like exactly. Yeah. I mean, the directors are just, you know, they come in and out. There's no set director all the time. So they're actually. Exactly. Guessing. Yeah. I, as I understand, directors are revolving on TV. Yep. And actors, you know, really run it. Mm -hmm. And the producers. And the producers, of course. Yeah. What's the first thing you do when you read a script? <laughs> the first thing I do, the first thing I do is actually read my character's lines. And just my character's lines. And then I go through it and I kind of black out all the direction. And then she puts her hat on the chair, you know, and then she starts to cry. I just black it all out. And then I read the whole script. Because I feel like those are like, I mean, look, if the director says you need to cry and you need to put the hat on the chair, I will do that. But uh, initially I like to have a little bit more freedom. And if like, I feel like I'm going to cry and put my head down, I'm going to do that. Do you know what I mean? I just like it to be a little bit more open and free. So yeah, I read my lines only characters lines, and then I read black it out. And then I read the whole script. And then do you look for a certain tool or do you use, do you, um, do you look for objective first or I'll go through a, a objective first? Like, what do I need? How bad do I want it? And even if I, in my mind, I don't need it that bad, I'm going to make it like it's life or death, right? I got to always up the stakes. Yeah. And then maybe I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How fun. You've had such an, in a strange way, such an easy and pleasant career. You know, you haven't had a huge amount of things to recover from. But is there anything that you've had an experience of when you were working that you feel like you had to recover from it? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely like come back to my trailer and had the director sitting on my bed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Some... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely actually been a lot of stuff, but I just kind of like roll with it. Right. I'm just like, how did you handle I... it when the director was sitting on the bed? I was like, are you, what's, what's going on? Are you okay? You know, what's, uh, what can I do for you? You know, <laughs> I mean, I didn't, it was awkward, right? It's weird. I got to go do a scene with him like after lunch. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was fine. He just wanted to go on a date. He wanted to what? <laughs> he just wanted to go on a date, whatever. Oh, okay. And so then what did you, what did you say? <laughs> I I, um, I declined and I was like worried that, you know, how's the rest of the shoot going to go? Right. Cause there's always that, but um, it was all, it all worked out. He turned out to be sweet. It was fine. Nothing pushy and weird, but just awkward, a lot of awkward moments. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but it's been pretty good. I feel like I've come out unscathed and then, um, and I haven't done anything. Like I was offered a lot of things and I passed on a lot of things with just crazy gratuitous nudity. And I'm not against nudity, um, actually, especially since my father passed away. I'm like, it, that was the main reason. But um, I couldn't, just couldn't do it. And now that I have children, little girls, 
but I passed on a lot of things that were just, it was just gratuitous, right? It was just like, why is that happening? And gratuitous sex scenes. So I passed on a lot of stuff. Um, yet I love the foreign films. Like Betty Blue is my favorite movie. And um, there's just, I watch all the French films. I love them all. And the, for some reason, the nudity and the sex just works. It just feels so authentic. And But when it's just flapped on the script and in the pages and it's just, bullshit i don't know i can't it just can't do that so i haven't been put in too many positions where it's awkward would you do nudity now oh yeah totally i work out every day i'm good <laughs> <laughs> i work every, yeah i work out every day too i think it's really really important to keep your just your mind your body physical body healthy and i love oh. it you know Totally. It's anti-aging, right? Every actor should be out there working out. What's your workout like? Um, well, right now I lift weights like four times a week, three to four times a week. And then I hike and um, I'm actually think I'm going to do this bikini competition. Like where <laughs> you so great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually lifting a lot of weights and I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to get like, you know, Arnold, right? Arnold. <laughs> but I, it's, bikini so you're really tight and toned with muscles but you're still feminine so that's like uh i'm doing that right now max you're so like fearless so tell me a little bit about how you've overcome fear i feel like the scariest part of acting is when you show up and you're the new kid on the first day right or you're about to leave for to ireland to galway right for two months and that's just like anxious it just brings up not anxiety but yeah anxiety a little anxiousness. Um, and then, you know, it's always the first day on set, meeting everybody, hoping, praying that you're all kind of copacetic, you know. Um, I mean, I'm pretty easy. I get along with everyone, but you never know, right? Um, so fear, getting over my fear. Um, I did this Hawaiian, um, this Ironman triathlon in Hawaii. And it was like 16 hours that were the hardest hours of my life. And I did a lot of self-talk because there was no one else to talk to. Um, and I think, I think back to that, like, if I can do that, I can do anything. So, I mean, I swam two and a half miles in the ocean, in the current. I rode my bike 112 miles right after, and then I ran a marathon right after that. So I think about the pain cave that I had to go in and I think, oh, if I could do that, I could do anything. 16 hours of straight exercise and then leading up to it, I had, cause you have to make these time, you have to get out of the water at a certain time. Then you have to get off the bike at a certain time. Otherwise you're disqualified. And it was in Hawaii and it was hot and windy. And I was with like all these people who are amazing athletes, like all my like idols, like every, everybody it was just uh, like amazing. Their bodies, their um, uh, determination. And uh, yeah, but I did it. And that's all I wanted to do was finish the thing because I, I knew I learned how to swim in 2000. I didn't know how to swim. So I had to learn how to swim. I did this thing in 2001. I'm a New Yorker. Wow. Yeah. What, New Yorkers don't swim. <laughs> Gosh, I've been swimming since I was like six. Really? Yeah. Oh, My yeah, parents had us take swim lessons when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh. I was brought up in California, so. Oh, Southern right. Okay. I always think of you as a New Yorker. Isn't that weird? Uh, no, people do. Yeah. I have a saying that I was brought up by two New Yorkers by the beach in Southern California. <laughs> there you go. My parents. Yeah. yeah, my parents are New Yorkers. And, um, you know, I have the, a lot of the mentality. I, you know, I was very close to my parents, so. Yeah, um, you're a New Yorker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what you're saying that's really, really cool is that you overcame fear by proving to yourself that you could overcome pain with your physical body. And it's interesting how I think that actors have to find the way to build. I, I always feel like confidence is something that you can't just buy or have. It's something you earn. Mm -hmm. You earn confidence. You earn fearlessness. And you mm -hmm. earn by doing. And so that, that's why it's so important to get up and do in class so much. And it's also important to get up, jump from a plane, but jumping like you did, or even doing your triathlon. So for you, overcoming fear has a lot to do with overcoming physical restrictions. 
Well, no, I have to say, like, during that race, like, uh, there were times in the ocean where I would be swimming, right, and the waves would just crash in, and I couldn't even, like, take a breath of air because I was swallowing salt water. And then, you know, I saw sharks, like, underneath me and stuff. But I, it was more, like, emotional because half the time you're like, God, you're, you're not strong enough to do this. You're a loser. Look at that person's body. Look at this. Look at the way they swim. Look at the way they bike. Look at their bike. So I was like having to go through a lot of self-doubt. So that's the thing. It was self-doubt. Can I do it? Am I trained? But the bottom line was I trained. I was prepared. And that's why I finished. And I think that's like with acting. You have to train. You have to prepare. You can't just go in and wing it. It's not like a commercial, right? Yeah, and then not to mention there's so much money on the line. It's so irresponsible. So I always have a little bit of anxiety because of that, because I just know how much is on the line, right? That's so true. It is irresponsible, and there is a lot of money on the line. Um, have you have you seen actors crash and burn on set? I've seen a lot, and that's why also why I went and got my master's degree in psychology, because I'm uh, curious about addiction and um, self-destruction and self like self sabotage see it all the time like every time i'm on a set i've seen it i know you can't name any names but tell us something that you can share about self sabotage well i mean i've just been on a set where the the actors the, don't know their lines at all and it's not like they're you know have some cognitive issue going on like you know, they just haven't studied they didn't prepare and then I've had been on set where the actor wouldn't come out of their trailer. And when they did come out, they were, could barely walk, you know? And I had to, I had to do, deliver my scene to a, a piece of tape, you know? So there's, there's always that stuff going on. Yeah, a light post and a tape. What do you think was happening with that actor? Um, who knows, just personal stuff, right? Um, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, this actor was, I mean, I've seen it multiple times, so I don't know, just personal stuff, you know, not being able to regulate yourself, not being able to cope, having a substance abuse issue. That's what I was thinking. Maybe drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a stressful job. I think especially when people have like the big names and stuff, you know, that's, a, you know, reading about yourself. How do you cope with reading about yourself? And um, sometimes it isn't pleasant to read it. Yeah, there, there's definitely been a lot of times when there's been nasty stuff. But to be quite honest, I don't really care. I mean, I'm doing my best, right? I can only do my best. And I bring people into my life, my life who make me better. My family, my support, my, my coach, right? You, my acting coach, my my. I mean, I just try to make myself better. And if someone can't think I'm a piece of whatever, or I'm not good, or I suck, I mean, what? I can't, right? For every person who thinks you suck, someone thinks you're amazing. So I just go with that. You're so easy to work with. You know that, Max. You're so, it's so comfortable, seriously, to work with you and, and to know you, um, you know, and um you know, you always open my heart whenever I'm with you. There's something about you I want you to know. I have to say, when you when you give feedback, I love when you give feedback after a scene because you do it in a way that's uplifting and gentle. Like, I've worked with many acting coaches and taking classes and stuff, right? Because it's been, been doing it for a while. And there's, like, some, like, shaming going on in some of the classes which I don't really understand because it's not, it doesn't work. I don't know anyone who gets better because they've been shamed. Right. So I just love the way you um, make us all better by, by just being uh, positive. And um, you even, I've even seen a situation where someone was really nervous and that just wasn't, it, it wasn't, you were taken out of the scene, right. Cause of their nerves. And you just, um, we're so gentle. It was just like, you leave, like, you feel like, let everyone land softly. And it seems to work because everyone does, redoes it. And it's, 
brilliant. You know, I, one of my concerns sometimes if actors say that is I love that you say that and I appreciate it, but then they think that they might come to class and everything's wonderful and you're great and they get pray, they think they're going to get a lot of praise. It's at the very beginning of that foundation and a mm. lot of actors, and I know you know this, well, they'll think they're more advanced than they are and they don't have the discipline or the connection to the work that's necessary to really work at a higher level. That's death to the actor. Thinking you What's know death? more, thinking you know more than you actually do. I think you should always come into everything like I am here to learn and I am the most humble person. You know, that's the, the that's the way I approach everything pretty much. Even if I have some skills, I'm just like, I, you know, like I'm, I, that's how I approach my master's degree. I'm a pretty good, dang good student, but I walked into that, those classes, even though I knew a little bit, like I'm just your humble servant, right? Because you have to be ready for it all to just penetrate you. Yeah. You can't have a wall of uh, ego. Ego will kill you. I was uh, fortunate enough to be in the master class. So everyone was pretty rocking, rocking their stuff. Oh, yeah. In my classes, yeah, the master level is very, very strong and very exciting. And there is a, um, I love that you said there's a humility to being an actor. It isn't an ego thing. You can't just say, I'm going to be brilliant. I'm going to be great. Now think I'm great. <laughs> also, people think, some actors say, well, nobody memorizes their lines, so I don't have to. It, they set a bad example for future actors coming up. They think that they can show up on set and not know their lines. I go as a guest star or co-star or whatever. And I'm like, how do they not know their lines? And we're spending all this time, which I look, I don't get it. But I mean, maybe people don't. Uh, I don't know. It seems like a block to me. And it seems like self-sabotage to me because they clearly get all like, you know, like kind of flustered. Right. When they, you know, when they keep messing up their lines. So it's not like it's working for them. Then if you're totally prepared and you know what you need, you know your objective, you have your emotional content, you have your imagery, your subconscious is, you know, everything's flowing, then you're not going to be nervous because there's no time for that. It's too, there's too much going on. It's too exciting to like, you know, work. Why would you be nervous? Is there a character you've played that you've learned a lot from? I mean, I think I learn a little something from every character because I've had to do a little research and I kind of do a journal for each character and, you know, thoughts and stuff come up that I'm like, whoa, that's not mine. Like, who, who is that? Oh, it's my character. This is exciting. So I listen, I learn a little bit from each character, I think. Does one TV appearance stand out for you for any reason? I liked my um, character on Rizzoli and Isles. Her husband dies in a boating accident, and that was a pretty good scene. But it was, um, it felt really good. It was a good scene. I really tapped into her. Is there an actor you've worked with that you've learned the most from? I mean, I learn from everyone. Um, every time I meet someone new. Um, but I guess, like celebrity wise, sure, uh, working with. Working with Jennifer Aniston was pretty cool because she uh, was like a television star, right? And I uh, honestly had not watched the show Friends because I didn't really watch TV. I modeled a lot. And I was traveling a lot. And um, I just used to see old movies at the Angelica Theater. I was like old movies. Um, but I learned a lot from her because she was so, she, she was like a veteran, right? And she was just so chill so humble and very kind and um, just an overall nice human being. So that was really ref refreshing. I just do love the natural and organic and authentic actors where they can just, they're like salesmen almost. They can sell you anything. They're so good. The actors that I really respect are just very authentic and organic and they don't push it right? They don't push the emotions. They just, they just let everything be. And they're very present. And um, 
yeah, they just, uh, they just, um, they really just tap into everything that we talked about, like um, emotional content and balance the personalization with uh, emotions. That's really, that's something that I've watched people do, which is really good. And by personalization, we mean connecting to something internally that's real, that's happening in the moment, in their, in their reality or life that connects mm -hmm. them to the story. Yes. Yes. Like something that um, is an experience that they've had that's very relatable to their character. And they just, they tap on it a little bit and then they bring in their imagination and then it just, just magic. Max, it's been so wonderful talking with you. Is there anything else you'd like to say to me or tell me or any advice you have for actors? Um, I would just say trust your instincts and don't second guess yourself and get a damn good coach. That's what I would say. Thank you Thank so you. much, Max. It's been wonderful. Okay. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Love you. Bye. L love you too. Thank you for joining us for another interview with one of my actors, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.